Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another On the Sensors production. We have a uh, extra special episode for you all today. So I'm joined by my OTS crew members here, Drac. Hello. And Duncan, straight from the airport, hey. the uh, worldwide businessman that he is. Um, <laughs> and we have the Echo Base crew with us. So we've got Echo 3, Echo 7, and Lando Wonka. Also known as Echo Five. Did I get that right, Mark? Yeah, I was Echo Fives for a while. I've changed it to Lando Wonka, so it syncs up now. Nice. Okay. Awesome. So yeah, we you know, similar to other podcast interview style videos, just wanted to give everyone a chance to get to know, you know, these awesome guys here. They they put out a ton of content, a lot of fantastic you know, um, written content, a lot of really insightful articles about the meta, you know, about pairings, about the reprint list, just like their thoughts and musings, you know, really, really smart guys. Um, also recently been more involved with, you know, within the RH crew, you know, some behind the scenes, maybe we'll get into a little bit of that, but um, there we've got Echo 7 now on camera. So, so, all right, guys, maybe we'll just kind of go around and, uh, you know, I'd like to just ask some basic questions and, you know, we have a full packed room here, but... I don't know, maybe I'll start with you, uh, Lando Wonka, and just, you know, what's your history with Destiny? How long have you been a Star Wars fan? Maybe we'll just give us some insight, man. Uh, I'm more of a gamer than a Star Wars fan. Um, but I was born on the year it was made. I was born in 1977, so it was, it was there when I was born. Um, picked that all up later. But the game itself, um, it was the January after it came out. I think it came out in November. Was it 16 or 17? And I randomly found it at a, at a, like a games convention in a place called High Wycombe over here, uh, a con called Handycon. And we just bought two starters and one pack, and I got like Han Solo out the pack out of Awakenings. So it was right at the beginning, played through. We used to have so many players locally. Um, I think the game got hit early on, with the lack of product, a lot, a lot of players local to me, they kind of just move on really quickly to another game if it's not there. Mm. So, so they just disappeared. It just dropped down really quick. But yeah, been to many events everywhere, even overseas. I managed the Nordics, went over there. Been to most nationals over here, BQs. I've been, I've played it all, and I, I, I set up the. Uh, the server now known as Echo Base, it was Wonka's factory at one point, and it was simply just to play, play games. Uh, once the pandemic hit, nobody could get together, so just wanted somewhere to play and people to play. Didn't want to stop playing, and that's how my bit started. But the the Echo Base website was started by uh, Mark and Ollie. They they started there. I, I tagged on a little bit later. Nice. Did you know anything else? No, that's awesome, man. So maybe we'll we'll go over to Echo Three, and then we'll come to you, Echo Seven, and then we'll kind of maybe we'll just. I think people would love to know how did you guys meet? How did you hook up? You know, how did this whole Echo Base server continue to grow into what it is now? So yeah, go ahead, Echo Three. Similar questions for you, man. You know, what's your history with the game and Star Wars as an IP and all that good stuff? Uh, well, Star, Star Wars is uh, is a way of life for me, man. Like, <laughs> I, I, I I wasn't quite born in '77, Mark, but uh, I, I was born in the '80s, '80s kid, '86. Uh, yeah, I grew up on Star Wars, man. You know, like my dad, like the first film I watched was I think I was about five or six. My dad just put on uh, New Hope VHS, and that was it. That was it. Every morning before school, every night after school. I was just watching those tapes day in, day out, and I was obsessed. Um, but yeah, I'm a big Star Wars nerd. Um, so then moving on to Destiny, I got involved in Awakenings. Um, me and my girlfriend, Steph, we went into a game shop. We were looking for a new game to play. We were playing this at the time. You guys ever played this? Hang on. Uh, Empire and Rebellion. You guys played that? Mm -mm. It's a really, it is an FFG game. It's a really cool little two-player game. I want something else to play. And um, they had the two-player, uh, not the two-player kits, the Kylo and the Race Starters. We picked them up. Mm -hmm. Got absolutely addicted to it. I, I wanted more. At the time, there was um, a shortage of Awakenings over here. 
So we didn't actually buy more product until Spirit of Rebellion came out um, when they reprinted like an Awakenings run. So that's when like I just got mad into Destiny, man. Absolutely mad into it. It was great. Mm. Um, yeah, and so how did I meet Mark and how did we start Echo Base? So the first time that uh, I met Echo 7, he's not on the call anymore. He's dropped, doesn't he? Mm. Uh, it was actually our regional um, 2018 in London. Um, uh, it was Mother's Day in the UK. I remember that much. Uh, it wasn't a big regional. I think there was like 29, 30 players. Um, I, I, I remember meeting Mark there and a bunch of other people. It was the first time I met Sarah Evans. Um, <laughs> a bunch of other UK players. Mark, were you there? Lando, you there? No, there London, no. No, I'm not London. Yeah, so I met Mike there. And funny enough, the conversation, well, we both made the top cut. We were both in the top eight. Um, and so there was kind of like a half hour break before the top cut uh, commenced. And we were talking, I was like, so where are you from, man? Like, w- like what's, what's your crack? Where are you? Where are you local to? And he was like, I live in Reading. And I was just like, are you kidding? I live in Reading. <laughs> so, um, like, hilariously, we we're only like 20 minutes away. And so uh, just from there, um, uh, we we just started playing weekly. Um, there's a weekly going on at our um, uh, like local game shop, so we'd meet up weekly. Or every other fortnight, we play. There's a bunch of other guys. So shout out to Chris Strong and Nikki. If they're probably going to catch up and watch this, and to Atari, um, who else was that? I can't remember, man. A couple of the other guys they don't play anymore. Um, but yeah, those guys they're still about. Uh, unfortunately, with what's been going on, I haven't been able to catch up with them recently to play in real life. I haven't even seen Mark like for about a year. But yeah, it's been good, man. Duncan and Drac, I want to give you guys a chance to just, you know, with your fellow countrymen, you know, what do you guys, you know, what, what would you guys like to, to learn about the Echo Crew? You know, have you, have you seen them in person? Have you seen them at events? You know, I know Duncan, you were part of the scene, right? So. Yeah, I've seen, um, I, I haven't played Dolly before, but I've seen Mark a lot. Um, we initially met up, I think, probably at Milton Keynes for the Galactic Qualifier, possibly. Um, but I was already in contact with him because he had a mutual friend, um, yeah. Eric, who plays other games, who's from Glasgow. So uh, <clears throat> we already were in contact somehow, knowing each other from, from that. And then we, we, we sort of... Yeah, we, 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 we met at Milton Keynes, but I think we properly met. We, went, we both flew over to Denmark for the Nordics at that time. Uh, yeah. And we had quite a few beers together. I, thought, I think we got a bit drunk on uh, various, various games over the, 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 the three days that we were there. Um, and uh, yeah, that was it. I mean, I was, I've seen him a few times. Um, I mean, it's interesting we mentioned Nordics because that was quite a big event for us because that was really hosted by... The Your Destiny uh, crew, who were a big content creator in the, you know, the sort of, the, the, not right at the beginning of Destiny, but, you know, the sort of mid, the glory years of Destiny. Um, and I know that a lot of what their content follows on from a lot of what uh, Your Destiny had been doing, um, which is quite interesting. So, I mean, you know, once Jack's uh, spoken a little bit about his history, that would be one of my questions would be, how did your destiny, the, the demise of that really, you know, affect Echobase's uh, content that they, that they write and, uh, and style and place in the game as well as the sort of European kind of um, arm of destiny. Um, yeah, but go ahead, Jack. Tell us a bit about your history of destiny. Um, well, I've never been to an in-person event. <laughs> that means that person. I've never been. I started... Um... <sighs> I think I started a round across the galaxy. Um, that's right, isn't it? Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah, I started on there and never went to in-person one. But I do have... Oh, because I was thinking about this earlier. Lando is the first person I ever played in a tournament, which was on, on the census. I remember that. Mm. First person I ever played. Before it was on yeah. the census, when it was Star Wars Destiny. Then... <laughs> <laughs> me and the whole ones can rebrand it all. Um, <laughs> first that was a play. bold naming choice to call the Discord Star Wars Destiny. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Elliot wherever you are. I don't know Elliot should yeah. be. <laughs> Honestly, and then Ollie is. I was thinking that like, I haven't mentioned Trash, but I remembered 
Yours is what I remember as the closest game of Destiny that I've ever had. Yeah? Do you remember Darth Bane being smited by BD1, rolling back in and getting his little oh, one? Mate. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> And yes, uh, don't. Yeah, you're one in <laughs> you're one in six, and you got it. Yeah, of course. Pong Krell <laughs> bringing in BD one, him going back in it. <laughs> yeah, but no, I so I'd never met them, but I do have experience with. Oh, also Lando taught me TTS as well. Um, but so no questions are really just to reminisce more than anything else. Yeah. <laughs> I do need to give an honourable mention to Echo Seven, who has. Helps me with a lot of my decks and taught me quite a fair bit on Destiny and maths. Yeah. <laughs> it's on that flick casually the most, but you know what? It's right. my it's a good call. Maybe on his behalf, can we just get a quick shout out to Echo Seven? Anyone want to, you know, maybe just like he well, clearly he seems to specialize in some of the written content. You know, I, I see I've seen all um, the Echo guys write, but anyone want to give a quick shout to Echo Seven who had to drop? Yeah, so. This will lead nicely into the the whole Your Destiny content. Mm -hmm. So Mark, uh, he's like a data analyst, right? So his his role, he was involved with Your Destiny. He'd do all of the graphs, he'd do the statistics, all for Klaus. But he was involved with Your Destiny to a certain extent. He would always, uh, he'd just that, he'd do, he's the numbers guy. Um, and it was with, when, when basically when uh, Your Destiny was slowing down content, uh, there was a UK event over here called uh, Gaming versus Cancer. <clears throat> Excuse me. It was a charity event, but it was actually an official regional as well. It was the biggest ever UK regional that we had over here. That was in, I think it was in November 2019. Um, yeah. And it, it was, the, the content from Your Destiny was slowing down. Uh, and Echo7 and I, we were having a discussion about like, because that was a really obscure like top cut um i made i actually made the final of that i was playing maul phasma and um what's the one cost plot where if you remove a die you deal a damage retribution retribution yeah. so i was playing that i made the final and it was against uh, i was playing a guy called zill a lot of the old school players will remember oh, yeah. a player called zill david payton um he yeah was david. single single die thrown Sentinel Messenger, Sentinel Messenger, and Greedo, and it was a really obscure top cut. We were just kind of like, well, is, you, someone's got right about this, man, because this is a really like all of the decks in the top eight were just a little bit like weird. Mm -hmm. So we just start our first article is to write about a UK meta. It just seems mm -hmm. so different to the American <clears throat> content from like the Hyperloops, and like you know Americans. Uh, Destiny just seemed to be droids, either Forlom, Grievous, Sentinel, or R2, C3PO mm -hmm. with Han or Satine or whatever. But like, it was just different over here when we were just mm -hmm. like, well, let's write about this. And, and that's, that's, that's how it started. That was the first article we did. And then that uh, led into... We didn't do anything for a long time, man. And then uh, we, we did... Um, uh, a, a set review of Spark of Hope. Um, not sorry, not Spark of Hope. Over missions, and then we just kind of like we're just cool. Well, this is fun. Let's just do an article every fortnight, and then it depends what's going on. Um, so we really started actually after the game was announced that it was over. So we we're just like, man, you know, it's been a, it's been like a life for the last three or four years, man. Mm. Like. Live and live and breathe this game yeah. if you're in it. <clears throat> so, um, like, I'm not ready to give this up. And like all of the content creators were slowing down, so we we're just like, let's go for it. Let's see what we can do. But that's that's how it kind of started, really. Yeah, you know, I don't have that same history as all you guys, but when I started playing yeah. the game, like it was already announced as as canceled, and I was just like, I still loved it. I was buying boxes of. Empire at War and Awakenings on Amazon for twenty dollars, and I had all these infinite decks made. And like Mark uh, Lando Wonka, when you guys wrote that article about Elliot and I, that like, and Sarah was, I think Sarah actually wrote something as well. It was like just like mm -hmm. this resurgence of infinite play, and it was because we were all just buying these cheap cars and cheap boxes. That's, and uh, that's how I found out about that, Sarah. Yeah, that's yeah, true. It's, it's true. With all that article, oh, really? okay. with all that article, I wouldn't have had Discord, and I wouldn't be on yeah. it. 
Yeah, we're super we, grateful for that. Because we had a we had a local um, that was like ten of us, but we never like went on Discord or anything. We were doing Destiny over Zoom. Yeah, and restarted it every forty minutes. It was horrible. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Saw that pop up. Went over there. Yeah. So you, so you guys are to blame for Jack's uh, Pong Rail deck, then technically the Echo Base guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which again, um, that was like the first thing I did was uh, X7 helps me do that deck review for that. I remember that article. Yeah, yeah. I remember you had like two yes. versions. One of them was an FFG. You wrote about both. It's because it, it's because there was a tawny on OTS, which was they had to have. <sighs> They had to appear together or could be together from the Clone Wars or something yes. like that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we had like a theme were, tournament. That and I had a long argument with Elliot for Pong, Krell, and Dooku, which eventually went okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, yeah. Um, what do you guys think now? You know, you kind of hit on it a little bit, Echo 3. It's, it's, you know, we don't want to let this game go, right? We love it that much. It's... It's just such a fun gaming hobby. I mean, for me personally, I'm either playing board games or I'm playing this, right? Over webcam or on TTS if I have to or in a tournament. You know, I've gotten a little bit involved with ARH recently and helping to run some of those Sunday weeklies and things. Um, but, you know, what, what's your guys' involvement with, with ARH? And, you know, what, where do you think, you know, how, how are you feeling now about, like, the state of the game? Maybe we'll go to you, Echo 3. Okay, man. Um... Uh, so my involvement with IRH, ARH is um, so I so I come on board as a member of the design team for Unlikely Heroes. I've been involved uh, from that perspective. Um, so I've been one of the set designers for this upcoming set, um, and that kind of progressed into. Um, I've actually also been uh, then moved into the production team. So I've been helping the art sourcing and then uh, editing the art, templating the art. I've been involved like from from the beginning of the set, seeing it all the way through to the end of the set now. So it's been uh, seeing everything from behind the scenes and what goes into making a card, all of the discussions, all of the team. So you propose a card, you put it on, post it on the forum. Uh, everyone else chips in, has a say, how about this, how about that? And then you end up with, with with a final card. It may be exactly the same as you proposed it, or it may look completely different. When you have a hive mind and players like six or seven guys like brainstorming over how the direction of a card comes together, it's great. And that obviously moves into production. And then Solace, who's historically done all of the art for the game through um, the previous sets, he. He taught me his methods of madness in how to do the art. So he's um, he hasn't passed the torch on to me, but he's um, we're, we're now co co admins of uh, of doing the art and production, which is really nice. So hats off to Solis for teaching me uh, his magical ways to make the cards look so good. Yeah, it's been, that's that's been that's been in my in depth involvement with it. So yeah, it's been good, man. It's been a tough three or four months. Uh, it's, it's busy, huh? I haven't, yeah, man. I haven't played much because like during that design phase, my mind was going forwards into this meta that we're coming into, unlikely heroes. Mm -hmm. I haven't really played much high stakes because um, my mind's been focused on what's coming. So it's yeah. been quite interesting in that regard. Well, we appreciate that sacrifice <laughs> because we get to <laughs> bear the fruits of that. <laughs> How about you, Lane? No, I'm not complaining. It's been fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I've sort of stayed out of the uh, ARH involvement. I don't have that much time um, to spare to do stuff like that. Um, obviously, just our weekly events keep going. But you mentioned the state of the game, and I think a lot of people will be coming back to play when this set comes out. Already, the reprint list looks better and nicer and i know that there are people out there that are not playing because they don't like the current meta and all this infinite feel of, of the game at the moment so hopefully we just push on and we get more and more players and more and more people playing and you can only get better from that i have duncan might might be happy about this and j might maybe as well 
Um, I've got uh, lines on several stores around the UK, which may have in-person events next year, 2022. Um, I'm just looking at dates with them now, and the first one is likely to be in Nottingham, uh, which seems fairly central for most. Um, it's kind of on your side of the Pennines there, uh, Jack. Yeah, it's not too bad. Because I've always said that if, if there is an event, another one in the UK, wherever it is, I'll go. Just have like, been to one. <laughs> yeah, man. I have to put down Legion for a bit. <laughs> well, that's it. And Nottingham seems quite central for a lot of the UK players. So just got to hammer in and close in on a date. They, that's all we're waiting for. Um, I've got prizes piled up over there from that have just come in randomly over time. And so we're, we're ready to go. I don't know if it's a horrible thought or kind of a cool thought. Do you ever think that we'll have a UK versus America slash extended style thing? (laughs) And would that be the coolest thing of the year? (laughs) You gotta find a host. You get a 20 man roster either side. (laughs) Can we make it like European versus America? Yeah. I think that makes sense. Get some of the Greeks in, like get Mm. MacMag and Rock and Drop. There you go. Europe versus yeah, Europe. and the yeah, and the Polish as well. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. A hypo. Yeah, that, that a was hypo. Good, um, maybe hypo that's a night. future. Maybe that's a future OTS Echo Base uh, event, joint hosted next year. Who knows? There we go. Mm-hmm. So who's flying where? That sounds good. We'll have to play it on the Atlantic, won't we? <laughs> on the ocean, just in, in the middle. <laughs> so the Near a the... small cruise ship. <laughs> A private go. prison island in the middle of the Atlantic <laughs> that we can find, I'm sure. Oh, uh, it's perfect. Mm. We can use I Iceland. Just to see, I was uh, just read out great well, for that. That's pretty close. And before I go, I'm going to board my flight in just a second. I just wanted to leave you with one comment, though. For me, Echo Base really came to the fore when the pandemic hit and, uh, and the Echo Base tournaments that happened last, sort of like May... June, July, you know, um, that was, I mean, that was, I mean, I was obviously always aware of Equibase, but that was really, really came to the fore in the Destiny community for me, because a lot of us were sitting there in the house during the pandemic in lockdown and with nothing to do. And that really, I mean, those first few events were fantastic for the UK community to keep everyone playing. I know Lando put a lot of work into organizing them. And that's kind of almost like the origin of the Thursday night play. I would. Yes, I would ask you guys. I mean, yeah, that's where be. that all started, and um, and that just meant so much to to us. And I think because that happened and then evolved into this regular place, you know, that probably saved quite a lot of players. You know, that's probably one of the reasons why I continued playing Destiny. So that's a big shout out to them, and thanks to them for the putting the the time in to sort of keep the community going. Yeah, well said, Duncan. There you go. Not not really a question, more of a statement, but you know. Um, yeah. Uh, what I would do is I would leave you with a question that you could discuss uh, for our two Echo Base members here. How would you both describe yourselves as players? Because I always used to think of Lando as a mill player initially. He used to write <laughs> yeah. a few mill, mill, mill uh, deck, deck, deck texts and deck guides. Um, I, keeps... I don't really know so much about Ollie, so talk about what kind of Destiny players you are and what kind of deck and characters you like to play with. <clears throat> cool. Good question. Right. I was always a mill player, it's true. Um, what was it? My European Championships top eight deck was uh, the Yoda, 13-point Yoda, Jar Jar, and a Jetta Partizan. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it was awesome. Into At the time, it was um, Kylo and Ray with Ayla and... Who did Kylo play with? Anakin, the Anakin. That that was all the race. Just after yeah. the world, everybody was playing it, and it just worked so well into them. Am I right in thinking that you still keep a list of every single game you play? I do, yeah. You do, excellent. <laughs> yeah, if you find me on Board Game Geek under Charlie Wonka, uh, you'll see all my plays of all my games since about two thousand and five. Oh, I might need to have a look oh, at man. this. Even wow. um, even just casual games on TTS, just 
TTSK, I, did, I, I only did face-to-face -face for a long time. And then when the pandemic hit, I started just logging them as TTS games as well. Because they felt like that was the new face-to-face. Um, so hold on. I, I think that's the first time I met you on on your senses, and I was watching you and Elliot play. And then mm -hmm. Elliot left, and we had like I had a conversation with you all the way home, just literally on my phone. Yeah, I remember that after work. That. Yeah, it was like an hour. <laughs> yeah, Bristol. Does, does that mean like walking around Bristol? Yeah. I'm like, oh, here I am, just like plop down in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. I had a quick question. Does that mean, Lando, that anyone can look up on Board Game Geek their win loss record against you? Um, I don't think it does that easily. You you can. You need to be um, a registered user, but you'd have that. to go through all of my thousands of games of Destiny to find your own name. I'm currently trying to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I can find. I can do it easier on on an app on my phone that's called BG Stats. And I can literally hone into a player to see the win rate between what's a, us. What's the user on here again, sir? Charlie Wonka. Just change Lando for Charlie. <laughs> Basically, Wonka's always been in my online name. But it's always been Charlie, as in Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. Because uh, his name, he was never going to stay as a bucket, was he, once he inherited the factory? So he's going to be Charlie Wonka. <laughs> and then I Star wars it. It with my favorite Star Wars character Lando, so that's where, where Lando Wonka comes from. All right, let's move on though. Echo Three. <laughs> anyway, how uh, would you describe yeah. yourself as a player? Um, experimental. Experimental. Yeah, experimental. Blue hero. Man. Blue hero. Yeah, blue hero has always been my <laughs> thing, man. Like, uh, I've always well, blue hero and red. I, I've always liked the mix of command and force on the hero side. Uh, that that hasn't always been like that isn't all you'll ever see me play. I'll I'll, I'll play anything. Um, but uh, one of my favorite decks, one of my one of the decks I've had most success with during the Legacies meta was um, two player Poe and Isla. Profitable connections. I mean, I played the snot out of that deck, man. Like that during that meta, that's all I played. I didn't play anything else. Uh, Way of the Force. Like I moved on to Talzin and the Super Commandos. Um, I built it like different. It wasn't about the uh, Sith holocrons and getting the abilities. You know, I I played things like the the slug throwers and Relbies. I was concentrated on weapons. I did pretty well with that. Um, you'll never in a million years see, see me play a mill deck. Um, I have uh, feelings of, of mill, um, I, but I do enjoy the challenge of playing mill. But there's, there's been phases through this game, um, like the Gen Con mill deck, like Yoda, Cassian, maybe Anakin, like... That was a pretty nasty meta in where uh, it was just too strong. Like, it should be there, it should be still 1.5, it should have its day, it should win tournaments. But that was just dominated by Mill, and it put me off Mill, man. It really did. Mm. But, um, I, I, I don't like playing it. I don't mind facing it. Uh, I, just, I just wouldn't play it. I'm more of an aggro player. Uh, a middle-middle aggro, just... Uh, yeah, you won't catch me playing supports either, man. It's just give me middle, middle, and that's it. Let me roll some guns and sticks. You just play some lightsabers. Exactly, sound exactly like my dad at the minute. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> he always says supports is too slow and mill's too boring. It is an interesting fact. Mill is not boring. Yeah, my no. most played deck, and Duncan will know this deck because I was playing it at the Nordics for ages, was. Forearm and Talzin with profitable connection to get possessed first turn or pulse cannon or the Relby that you just mentioned. A big three yeah. down. Um, I'm pretty sure I played Duncan loads of that, but that is my most played deck. I want to kind of start to close this out here a little bit. So for those who have stuck with us, we do have a little treat for you. So Echo 3, you want to? Want to lead us through the next phase here? So we're going to be flashing up some stuff on the screen for the viewer. Um, yeah, so man. for all of us here live, you know, if you want to look on your phones or on your computers, so we can kind of follow along. But Echo's got some a treat for us. So um, I've been able to um, 
that's a few spoilers. Uh, unlikely hero spoilers. So I'll take. Uh, mm. I'll, I'll talk you through the first one. Um, Gazanti Cruiser, uh, two cost gray vehicle, neutral. Uh, one okay. shield, two shield, two shields for one. Uh, resource resource blank uh, has a power action. Remove one of your dice showing a shield. Discard a random card from an opponent's hand. What do you guys think about that? Wow, that's um, that's interesting. It's like maybe have we lost what were the grey neutral uh Vespin wing guard and then there was another one, the other support that would uh that would help the clap. Maybe it's a replacement. I'm guessing they might have rotated out the Wretched, Wretched Hive. Wretched Hive. Wretched Hive, yeah. So it's maybe kind of replacement for those. Obviously, you're looking at Jawas to play that with. You know, they're perfectly built for Jawas. Yeah, I'm going to keep those well. Mando from Randall Mando from the OKS Center will probably be oh, he'll love enjoying that, that spoiler. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it seems pretty solid. A lot of shields there. You're removing it. Mainly it's on dice, I would imagine, to get that guaranteed discard. Oh, yeah. I don't know. What do you think? I, I like it even in just a regular deck, right? It's just a nice little two drop. Go. It's got two money yeah. sides. It's got some survivability. And, you know, if it's the end of the round and your opponent's sitting on some, like, average faces on their dice, they have one card left in hand, you're probably going to PA, right, to force them to get rid of that last card. It's basically can be mitigation in that way. I, I really like this. Pretty versatile. Gazanti Cruiser. That's going to go instantly into any, like... I, I'm sorry, I'm a little out of the loop, so I don't know if we're going to lose a load of sets, but I'm going to say Conan, and I'm going to say that the man now has three discard size. Because he had that pitiful one... He had that pitiful one shield, which is now useful. The Gazanti to me it just um, it screams utility. You know, you can put that in a in, in a mill deck. Um, you don't have to remove this die, the Gazanti die. It could be any die showing a shield. Yeah. Uh, to take one card from the opponent's hand. Um, on the other hand, you may want to put it in an aggro deck for uh, for those resource sides, or you want the shields as protection. Um, Maybe you run it in uh, Blue Hero. I know, I know they have lots of shields. Uh, perhaps you have, um, you know, lightsaber Tomfa on the zero zero shield side. You can PA this, turn that zero shield into a discard side. Um, I, yeah, I think there's utility in it, man. I think it could slot into a lot of decks. Yeah, I think so. Utility is the word. Yeah, hundred percent. So yeah, Echo Three. What's the next one for us, man? Uh, okay, so the next card, um, it's a neutral, grey neutral one cost event. It's called Unique Perspectives. Um, so what we've given today is uh, <laughs> spot two characters that share a subtype and not a colour to deal two damage to a character. Uh, or spot two characters that share a colour and no subtype to heal two damage from a character. So, uh, you guys. I, I love it, first it. of all. I, I was trying to think of a way. Is it po I'm sure everyone will try to crack this. Is it possible Three, to, meet, we already have. to meet both yeah. requirements? Yeah, absolutely. It is. It has to be a three white. Yeah, of course. Very it specific lineup. Yeah, it can be done. Absolutely. Um, that's, that's our question to you. What what lineups will, will that's, make that's this go? Funny. And to the rest of the Destiny community. So, um, interestingly... We've 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 seen some cards in this set so far in Unlikely Heroes, like some big characters with some scary sides, like Mace Windu. Yeah. Right. He's got that power action that can basically do unblock. Well, it does unblockable damage no matter what. But if it if it defeats the character, you can sort of flip it back and resolve it again. And so it's like kind of feels a little bit like very punishing against the lower health lineups three wides. And yet there's also cards like this that might encourage that. So I, I kind of like that. It's like that, you know, tug of war a little bit. What are you going to do? Are you going to risk bringing out a seven health character with mace floating around? You know, it's, but this could be really rewarding if you do that. What do you guys think? Vader, Jawa. Vader, uh, Jawa? I'll be I, don't know it's going. I, have, I have eight left. Um, <laughs> Eight point yellow, someone help me please. 
Did we get him a clue? Yeah. No, 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 no. Let's get a clue. Um, we might be here all night. We got to wrap this up soon. <laughs> you've got to think of common subtypes. Ones that are most, most likely. Sando, just fire off some decks so you can use it, man. Just do it. Put I can't remember them. <laughs> That's why I asked them. <laughs> Fate it, was, it was leaders, wasn't it? It was leaders. Leaders and troopers, maybe? What's the yeah. one that steals money? What's that called? And it's the magma glove. What's that thing called? Um, nah, father, nah, shard of thief. thief. They're scavengers, and so are Jawas, and invaders. Doesn't they don't share a color? Oh, thief, that's a uh, hero. <laughs> I need a nap. <laughs> you, you need I'm like. Just, I'm happy that there's a card here that's going to get everyone thinking. Oh yeah, you know yeah. I mean? yeah. Like, yeah. It's, It'll it's, give them it's, unique it's, perspectives, I reckon. Yeah, it's a very, it's a very cool card. Well, I mean, the, um, deck builder's dream for sure. Yeah, man. Give it a go. See what you guys can come up with. I'm not uh, going to say any of them. So I you love how Jack went straight to Jowers so he can play for free. I went with the oh, wrong oh, Vader. Vader Victor, because he's got three of a bunny and they're all great. Sith leader pilot. Blue, done. Sith leader pilot. You, you doesn't doesn't share, you've got nobody else that shares a blue, though. You've got to share a yeah, colour with the others. Get a blue, I don't know, it's a little Sith, like uh, Zana. Two Jawas. She has to kill someone. I have to say. My brain was going terror. My brain was in Sigur Vader terror, because that's, that's who I play at the minute. So, I like, no, he's too big. <laughs> I think the real question, though, is, and, and maybe we'll sort of end on this note shortly, so is it worth it to include if you can only meet one of the of the spot requirements? Yeah. It yeah, can be. You, you just think you've got a field medic if you can meet the heal. Mm. It's exactly the same cost, you know, yeah, or, field medic or you've, got a, a, you've got a conflicted, it's the same cost as a conflicted for potentially two damage. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, again, utility. Both of these great cards, you can fit in anywhere. I love and that. That's the biggest bonus. Great neutral cards are so versatile, right? I mean, yeah, that's man. by definition. I love that. Maybe. I like this yeah. in um, like an Ahsoka build. Like if you had an Ahsoka and a thirteen point blue, because she has no subtype, you're not going to trigger both things here. But it'll give her a heal. Because with the reprint list and convergence rotating, there's no back to therapy or anything to heal her. Great um, point. Yeah. So whoever you're like, whatever blue you pair her with, you're going to get this off. So it's just quite. I think I like it with her. Um, you know, we've seen Bo-Katan. You could pair um, Bo-Katan, she's 16, you pair her with Kara June, they're both troopers. So you could get the first part of this off, the, the dealing to, yeah. you know, that sort of thing. Like That just makes, like that lineup, uh, it's quite aggressive. This just makes it even more aggressive. It's two yeah. from hand. That's huge, That's yeah, two my, from my hand. My favorite yeah, is man. to go all out healing with the Wookiees. This could bring Wolf Wario back. Wolf Wario, Chewbacca, yeah. Yeah, yeah. bring in uh, Tarful. They're all they'll all be legal, and then you've got field medic to take that damage away that you have to put on at the start. You've got first aid that's on the reprint list. Then you've got this, and I think you've still got one to safety as well. Yeah, you could heal a lot from that. Yeah, that's why I'm going to try it in first. Very cool. All right, gentlemen. Well, this has been fun. It's been awesome to see your faces, Lando <laughs> and Echo Three, and the very beginning, we saw a brief glimpse of Echo 7. I think we did, out in the park. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. I think, just, I think, put well, picture, just put a picture up of him. I know. <laughs> yeah. this, is, this, is Echo, this is Echo 7. We'll pay him respect. So. <laughs> it's great to have Duncan as well. I know he had to sort of sign off and um, was hanging out at the airport, you know, like a trooper to, to be here today. But anyway, guys, I appreciate your time. You know, Drax, also uh, awesome to see you come back out, man. Do Sorry about my this. Mild breakdown at the end. I'm still running it over in my head. Oh man, <laughs> I see the gears spinning up there. So, uh, but yeah, any any parting comments before we sign off today, guys? Uh, thank you for your contribution that you're doing as well, man. It's it's great that it's we're, we're not not the only ones alongside DC and uh, Destiny Junior and and the rest of the gang. Like, it's, like your involvement's been great. It's, uh, yeah, so thank you for your involvement as well, man. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Great to you. see. Thanks, guys. Yeah, right. brought a lot of players through that way. Yeah, yeah man. Cool. 
Appreciate it, guys. All right, so Echo 3, Lando Wonka, Drac. Appreciate you guys coming out. Again, guys, I've been Majo, so we'll, we'll catch you next time. And thanks for tuning in, and take care. Adios.